Hey guys, how you going? What's going on? My name's Adam Dyson. Welcome back to another video. Uh, today I am at one of my favourite waterfalls in the Otway National Park. I am at Beauchamp Falls and today I'm going to run you through exactly how I shot this shot. So at this stage too, I still don't have a name for this series. So if you have any name suggestions, chuck them in the comment section below. Um, eventually I'll have a name for it, but at the moment it's just going to be called how I shot this shot. So starting off, this is a really, really cool waterfall. It's actually quite big and it's right near Hopeton Falls in the Otway National Park, as I said before. Um, a really good thing about this waterfall is that it's never very busy because of the walk in. So it gives you a really, really good opportunity to really focus on your compositions and not have to worry about too many people being in your shot. So the things we're going to need for this particular shot today is of course a camera. We're also going to use a tripod today and tripod will give us a really stable image. It'll also give us the ability to lengthen out the shutter speed slightly to give that really dreamy look in the water. We're also going to use a circular polarizer which takes the glare off the water and we're possibly going to use a six stop ND filter. Now, if you don't know already, I'm actually a reseller for Nissi Filters Australia. So if you ever did need some ND filters or circular polarizers or anything in the filter range, um, let me know. More than happy to help you out. thing I notice when I arrive at this waterfall is there's two palm trees and one on either side of the waterfall which kind of acts as a bit of a frame for the waterfall. So the composition I'm going to try to do today is probably going to incorporate the entirety of the waterfall as well as one of these palm trees either side of the waterfall. So there is a second fern over the other side of the waterfall, which I actually like better for the composition. The main problem I see with that second fern is that it's going to cause a lot of problems with the spray from the waterfall. So the majority of the spray from the waterfall is actually going straight past that fern. Um, so I think I'm going to give that one a miss just because I don't want to have to clean my lens and have to deal with so much mist on the front of the lens itself. All right, so the rain has kind of cleared up a little bit um, and it's starting to actually look really cool. The mist has kind of started to come down a little bit as well. So I've scattered out a bit of a composition uh, while it was raining, just running around taking photos in the rain, which is always fun. Um, but I think I'm going to focus on this composition here, which is straight in front of this palm tree with the waterfall kind of in the background. Um, so yeah, let's jump into the camera, have a look at it, and I'll tell you exactly what I'm trying to do. So before we get into the composition, I'm gonna run you through my settings. So I've got 100 ISO, I've got F8 at the moment, and I'm starting at my base exposure at about one second. So one second for me is a really good balance between the light peeking through the trees in the top of the frame and the darks in this foreground. As I said in my last tutorials as well, it's always smart to bracket two stops over and two stops under your base exposure as well, just so you've got that detail to play with later in post-production. So I think this composition is starting to work really, really well, but the main thing I really wanted to focus on is trying to get more of the top of this fern tree here. So I'm gonna tilt my composition up ever so slightly, um, just to emphasize the top of that fern tree. This is a perfect example of why you should bracket your shots. Um, that sky is well and truly blown out, so I'm gonna two, maybe even three or four stops underexpose the sky, just so that if I need that detail, I can bring it back in post. 
So the gear I'm using today is a Fujifilm X-T2. Um, I'm also using the Fujifilm 10 to 24 millimeter lens. And on the front, I've got a Nissi Filters landscape polarizer. So the next thing I wanted to try from there is I just wanted to try to drop my composition down ever so slightly um, by pulling out the notches on the tripod legs. I can bring my tripod down to nearly ground level. And this will kind of give me a little bit more of a leading line in this foreground. So as a whole, I'm really happy with this composition. I've got some really nice foreground. There's a nice leading line from the fern tree, which leads you nicely into the waterfall. And it just creates this nice story throughout the image. So that's the main thing that I'm trying to create with every image. And as wanky as it sounds, all I want to do is every image, I want to create a little story. So with this particular image, you've got the foreground, which leads you into the fern. The fern leads you over the top of the waterfall and the waterfall is the main subject. So finally, I'm going to move my camera around ever so slightly again just to adjust the composition to kind of balance out the scene a little bit more. So other than that, we're pretty much done. So I'm going to bracket off the scene, double check my exposure, and this shot's over and done with. Another thing that I've done that I think is a little bit overlooked in landscape photography is I've kind of cleaned up the foreground. Now I could probably do this in post-production later on, but it's just as easy for me to walk over, pick up a handful of leaves and move them out of the shot and it's just gonna create a slightly cleaner image to work with later on. So I get a lot of questions asking where do I focus in a landscape photo? So as a rule, I always focus about a third of the way up the scene. If I've got anything closer to the foreground, I'll focus on that thing in the foreground. And most of the time, if I'm using somewhere between F8 and F16 in my airstop, it's gonna create enough depth of field that everything's gonna be in focus. And if I need more to be in focus, I just end up focus stacking. But for 90% of my landscape photos, I focus about a third of the way up from the bottom of the scene. So after a bit of post-processing, this is what the final image looks like. So I really love all the dynamic lines in this image. As I said before, there's a really nice foreground leading into the image. So the fern tree kind of towers over the top of the waterfall, which gives it a bit of scale as well. Um, and it's just overall a really good feeling image. I really hope you enjoyed this. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And until next time, I'll catch you later.